Asset groups, asset frameworks, or asset trees, whatever you call them, creating a useful structure of your process historian data is a challenge for many organizations. The teams that build or manage the asset structure are not the same as the people who use them. This can lead to asset frameworks that are disconnected from the end user's needs, often making working with asset groups frustrating. Can you relate? Hi everyone, my name is Rupesh and I'm an analytics engineer with Seek. Today we're going to discuss asset groups. I love this point and click feature because it's so user friendly. It empowers you to be creative, try different approaches, and iterate on different data structures. No Python coding, no admin access needed. You can create an asset group that works for you and quickly scale all your analysis. In this video, I'm going to show you the basics of how to use asset groups. First, how to configure asset groups. Second, how to navigate through different trend views using asset groups. Third, how to create a calculation that applies to your asset group. And finally, how to visualize your data across the asset group. Starting in Seek Workbench, navigate to the Data tab. Next to the asset groups, we can create a new asset group by hitting Create. This opens the Asset Group Editor mode. We can rename our new asset group by typing here. We can add assets by clicking here. I'll add three. We can rename our assets by clicking on the text. I'll go ahead and rename these assets. And finally, we can rename the items by clicking here. These sometimes are called attributes. To map the tags associated with each asset and item, click on the plus sign. This allows you to search for tags and link them to the associated item and asset. I'll do the same for the other two assets so you can see. Finally, the third. I can add additional items to the asset group by clicking the Add column. In this case, I'll add two more columns. I'll call them Relative Humidity and Wet Pulp Temperature. Once the items have been linked to the asset, I can hit Save. The new asset group has been created and it can be found in the data tab. We can use our new asset group to navigate through trends in the display. The new asset group can be found on the data tab under asset groups. I'll click in, I'll go into Chicago, and I will add all three tags into the display. I will also add labels for the name, asset, and unit of measure so we can track as we switch the assets. I'll go back into the asset and I'll swap to a different city. As you can see in both the display and the details pane, the asset has swapped to Dallas. I'll do the same for El Paso. Now that we've configured the asset group, we can perform calculations. This is how we scale our analysis across all the assets. I'll show you how to do this in two ways. First, let's create a temperature condition using value search. I'll go to our tools tab, select identify, and select value search. We're looking for high temperature. I'll select our temperature signal when the temperature is greater than 102 degrees. As you can see, no capsules have been created for this condition, but let's see if they're in the other assets. I'll swap to Dallas. I do see a created capsule for this condition. I'll do the same for Chicago. And I see a few more. The second way to perform the calculation is within the asset group itself. Let's go to the data pane and edit the asset group. Instead of adding an item, I'll add a new calculated item. 
Let's build this formula from scratch. So let's call this glow temperature. And we'll say when the temperature is less than 25 degrees. And we'll add that calculated item. And now we've got a formula within the asset group. Let's save that and see how that looks on our display pane. Let's enter the asset group in Chicago and add our low temperature condition to the display. Once again, we see the capsules are created. So there are two ways to create calculations within asset group. Finally, asset groups enable users to visualize data across the assets. I'll demonstrate this using a tree map. So I'll change from our trend view to tree map. You'll notice it says select a prioritized color for every condition in the details pane. So depending on how you select the colors, different conditions will be visualized. So I will check high temperature as my top priority color that I want to visualize. And I will check low temperature, select low temperature as my medium priority. So I'll select that and we can see in the past day, we've had two high temperature conditions in Chicago and Dallas. If I step forward halfway, we can see that in Chicago and Dallas, now there's not high temperature, but we have two low temperature conditions. When you set up your asset groups properly, it accelerates your time to insight. I hope you found this video helpful. For more helpful resources, please check out our blog post series on seek.org. You can find them by searching asset groups. Thanks.